Here we're going to be looking at two different examples of angiosarcoma. This first case is going to be an example of a low-grade angiosarcoma, and the second one is going to be more of a high-grade angiosarcoma. So here in this first case, you can see that we're dealing with the skin. So we have epidermis uh, and underlying dermis. And you'll notice that even at low power, you can see kind of some kind of atypical vascular spaces uh, permeating through into the dermis. And you'll actually see that uh, these spaces continue as you go into the deep dermis. Some of the features that we look for to help us with the diagnosis of angiosarcoma are atypical endothelial cells. And so when you look at the um, vascular spaces, what you see is that there's irregular and dark nuclei. A lot of them will tend to kind of pooch out into the lumen of the blood vessel. Uh, and you also have mitotic figures. Uh, the other thing that this case shows is intraluminal growth. So typically you don't see endothelium present within the lumen of the blood vessels, but here we see this kind of papillary growth of endothelium inside the blood vessel. So these features are seen in both low and high grade angiosarcomas. As the tumor gets more high grade, they tend to become more cellular, as you'll see in our next case. So here again at low power, a large dilated vascular space with lots of intraluminal growth. And when we go down and we take a look at higher power, you can see that the nuclei that line these spaces are very atypical, very dark, and can project into that vascular space. So this is an example of a relatively low-grade angiosarcoma. In contrast, uh, what we have here is first off more skin, and you'll see that again epidermis at the top. Uh, this blue change to the dermis is actually what we call solar elastosis, and this is uh, usually secondary to sun exposure or UV light exposure. So again, beware of those tanning beds because uh, this is what it's doing to your skin. Uh, but underneath that you'll actually see the tumor and so you can see the tumor across the bottom of this image and you'll notice that it doesn't look like the last one and that the vascular spaces are much smaller and this tumor is a lot more cellular and indeed as you follow this tumor around you can see that uh, areas look a lot like what we saw in Kaposi sarcoma where you just have a solid growth of these spindled cells uh, when we go down to higher power and take a closer look uh, you can see that there's a lot of uh, nuclear overlap, a lot of nuclear atypia, and here's a mitotic figure, uh, and several other mitotic figures can be seen scattered throughout this tumor. So there's a lot of atypical stromal cells, which are basically endothelial cells, uh, and a lot of mitotic activity. You'll notice in certain areas they try to form blood vessels, like it's remembering what it used to be. Uh, however, this doesn't always happen in a really high-grade case. So this is an example of a high-grade angiosarcoma. Um, and you can see that it also extends deep within this specimen almost all the way, or actually all the way to the surgical margin. You can see the ink here and the tumor present at that ink. These tumors often have a very poor prognosis and uh, the clinical course is marked by multiple recurrences. So this was an example of two different angiosarcomas, one low grade and one high grade.